Prepare for extraction in three, two, one. I was making good money as the owner of a company, but I wasn't enjoying life. I wasn't seeing my family as much as I'd like, and it made me think for a minute, our employees, what do they get out of it? So after that, we implemented a policy where we take a significant portion of the profit that we make, and it actually goes back to the employees. So when we started doing that, it was exciting for me because now when a game came out and it sold really well, other people are coming in with cars, other people are buying houses and smiles on their faces, and so I really like that we give back to the employees and that they can see a reward for the work that they do. Hi, I'm John Gibson. I'm the president of Tripwire Interactive. Tripwire is one of those companies where we do this because we love it. It's important to us that everybody here enjoys what they're doing and wants to be here and all those sorts of things. It started out as a small ragtag family above a church and we finally got big enough to where that building was too small and we came here. There's like a pretty good amount of creative control. I'm really good friends with my art director. Andrew was at a local convention that we have for game developers and I was doing the portfolio review. I went to the Art Institute of Atlanta, graduated like top of my class, so I was like totally stoked. I was like, I'm the best ever. I think I crushed his dreams and told him his portfolio was awful. And usually in those situations, you never see those people again. It's like the fifth time I was showing him my stuff. He literally said, wow, your stuff doesn't suck anymore. And uh, yeah, so now he works here. We got our start doing these very realistic war games. For no obvious reason, a team kind of coalesced around the Red Orchestra mod in about 2002, 2003. We went through the Make Something Unreal contest that Epic and NVIDIA ran. To our initial shock and surprise, we started winning everything in the contest. There's that elation of winning, and then within a few days, the reality sinks in. It's like, we're going to start a company now? How do you do that? We did some interesting things to get off the ground. We went to the members of the mod team and we're like, hey, if you are willing to wait until the game ships and actually starts earning money, we will pay you like 50% bonus on top of that. When it came out and it sold 50,000 copies in the first week, we literally covered our entire game development budget, paid everyone back. My mother-in-law got a retirement fund back. The guy got his mortgage money back and it worked. They're all dead. It's time to go shopping. A guy named Alex Quick had been making this mod called Killing Floor. We sent it around to the other guys in the office, and they started playing it. We found ourselves addicted. So we brought him in, and we worked on the mod with him, and polished it up, and made a commercial game out of it. And then Killing Floor comes out and sells over 3 million copies. And it was like this transformational moment for our studio. It was transformative for Alex. It allowed him to go out and start his own company, and he was able to start making games because of that. Give me a sec, I'm reloading. And we'd always said, as VR started to gain momentum in the last couple of years, that we weren't gonna just do something obvious. Shooting monsters is fun, but we also felt like telling a story in VR could be very compelling. Hey mate, nice to see you again. I'm about to blow your mind. And this time around, you'll find that the players will be jumping into the world as a Horzine employee. Horzine is the evil corporation that has almost brought about the end of the world. Horzine is being the good BP. You're training to clean up these monsters. We call them Zeds, that have, they're rampaging across Europe. Hundreds of lives depend on us protecting those programs. So with the uh, characters, the Zeds in Incursion, we want them to feel real. We want you to have that visceral sense of fear. I think that, especially when people see the spider, human-sized monster that crawls towards you, people scream. I've seen people rip the headset off. But I think in any artistic medium, I think our goal is to make people feel. There's so much blood, but whenever the gore is over, it's all still laying on the floor. So it's nice to be able to look down and it's not just like, oh yeah, video game stuff. It's like, oh, gross. <laughs> that is meat and that's an arm and I don't know what that is, but it looks really upsetting. Are you okay? I'm honestly shocked you're as functional as you are. Most people would be a vegetable. Whenever you're up close to something in a regular game, it's easier to fake depth and detail. But in VR, it has to actually be there. You have to like really add in the nooks and crannies. So everybody knows how big a door is, and you find people going like, I feel really small in here, or I feel really big in here. And having to deal with those kind of things has made a huge difference, and you have to constantly check your work. Does this feel right? Does this desk feel right? Does this chair feel right? My head looks bloody enormous. There's a lot of subtle jokes scattered around through the environments. You'll realize that in those quieter moments, the actual characters are cracking out, the odd sarcastic comment flying, and just light bits of humor. There's not supposed to be a hobo hangout thing on this level. 
buddy developers. One of the things we found was that when there's people around playing with friends, you naturally just layer on an extra chunk of fun because you, know, you start messing about. Someone's not looking and realizes that everybody else has run off. You know, you're going, you've all run off and locked me in this room. You bastards. I kind of explain it to people that if I go home after work of an evening and you know I've had a nice day at the office and I feel like a little bit more cerebral, I'll play Red Orchestra. If I've had a hard day at the office and I need to let off steam, Killing Floor is a great way to go. It's mayhem, it's silliness. It's about creativity, it's about us being able to deliver stuff that people enjoy and go on enjoying. The team works. We have the please don't work over time if you don't have to policy. <laughs> It makes it easy to have a family, to live outside of this place. I kind of have this nostalgia for 80s movie and television. So I collect 80s and movie television cars. Uh, he's kind of obsessed. I mean, it's like his thing, right? Everyone has their thing. <laughs> I have an 83 Trans Am that's black and tan, you know, like the Knight Rider car. I have a uh, 69 Charger, you know, Dukes of Hazard. I have a DeLorean, you know, Back to the Future. The real fun of having the DeLorean is, is being able to share it with people. It, it, I, I just really love that. It makes people smile. The next evolution would be to get the Airwolf helicopter, but I don't know if I can convince him of that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.